Hello, STEM Nation. Jeff here, and welcome to episode number 58 of STEM on Fire, where we interview practicing professionals in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math to help guide students interested in STEM careers. If you like what you hear, please share it with a friend. Now let's get fired up today with our guest, Valerie, and I hope our chat will help ignite your passion towards a STEM career. Valerie earned a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and has had numerous internships through college, was president of the IEEE chapter at UWM, and a very active community member. She is currently a client account manager at Cinercom. Welcome to the show, Valerie. Fill in any gaps and share a bit of your personal life. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff, for having me today. Um, I think you hunkered down in pretty much everything, so let's get into it and go. You've got a degree in electrical engineering, and looking at Cinercom and, and what you what you're doing there, what the company does, feels more like an IT company, like you've had a, like you would have an IT degree to work there. How does the electrical engineering degree help you at Cinercom? So I think an electrical engineering degree allows you to do pretty much anything. You have the ability um, to understand, you know, technology at a very low level. And it sets a good foundation for any field in technology, including IT. I do work with a lot of electrical engineers that are also in IT and information security. But essentially everything, you know, plays in and integrates into each other, especially when you come into low-level items such as cybersecurity, getting on that physical level. Um, so electrical engineering has only helped. All right. Thanks for that, Valerie. And and looking at your LinkedIn uh, profile, you've had a handful of internships. Could you describe how those internships help mold into what you're doing today? When you get into college and you're trying to decide what you want to be, you have so many opportunities presented to you in electrical engineering. Uh, and there's so many different fields. You could do renewable energy, electronics, research and design, aerospace, biomedical. And so here I am sitting, you know, right back, you know, first semester going, what do I want to be when I grow up? So I used that opportunity in college to have inter internships to kind of vet out and decide what I wanted to be. Um, I did product management internships at Pentair where I was able to help develop um, water softener systems and displays that go on those water softener systems. I worked at Harley-Davidson where I was doing application development for maintenance reliability to help optimize the plant floor. And also I did PLC programming there and, and power transmission. And then I ended up taking other opportunities, going to various conferences and found out that cybersecurity and computer networks was really where my passion lied. So you're doing a lot of work in cybersecurity. What are some things that you think we need to know about cybersecurity that we may not? At a very basic level, I think everyone needs to understand that it's their responsibility, that you need to make sure you're patching your computers. It's so easy for us to, you know, hold off updates, but really those, those that present a vulnerability and a risk. Um, to be compromised. You need to make sure that you know who's sending you emails and not just clicking and giving your information. For example, I saw someone who said, free day of PTO if you fill out all this information, which included their you know, password, and, and they gave that up. So it's really a culture of just being aware that there are people trying to compromise um, your devices and, and making sure you can kind of advert any of those attempts if possible. STEM Nation here, this is the podcast is geared towards junior, seniors, and high school thinking about STEM careers. And, you know, the, the idea of cybersecurity, right? Security is becoming such a big issue, and it's on the forefront of many companies' minds. And I think it's going to be a great per career path going forward. So would you recommend students that are interested in, in this type of field to go through the information technology or the IT route or computer engineering, computer science, or doubly, what would be your insights into that? I think a lot of the those degrees are all interrelated, as I previously said, um, and everyone gets to their endpoint a different way. I think all of those are, are great methods if you're interested in computer networks and cybersecurity. A lot of this, because technology is emerging so fast, everyone's learning on the fly and trying to just soak up as much information as possible. So you could start wherever you'd want from any of those starting points and you just choose what you want to focus your um, your time and effort on and, and learn that way. At Cinercom, are you doing software development? You're, you're a client account manager. What does that mean? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So I have, you know, the traditional electrical engineering degree and I kind of realized that I liked solving higher level complex problems for businesses, or the government or school systems. Um, so I'm more in a customer-facing, like consulting and sales role. 
So I used a lot of that complex thinking and, you know, strategy that I learned from my electrical engineering undergrad and now apply it to solving these large business problems. Valerie, as a client account manager, not really doing the, the software development, what does it really mean to be a client account manager in the, in the sales side? So most of my days require me on site at customers. Again, we work in a global economy, so sometimes I get to work at Starbucks or my corporate officer at home, but really to help school systems or governments and large enterprises and understand their business, I'm on site with them working through their problems, understanding where their gaps are in their information security program, understanding what their current infrastructure looks like and if it can sustain and scale for the next five years, if that's you know routing, switching to wireless, to you know, security solutions such as endpoint security or SIMS. Essentially, I'm in the trenches working with their teams, facilitating the correct resources for my team, uh, making sure that everyone has the knowledge transfer to help each of these groups come together to, to solve these strategic problems and enable their businesses. All right, Valerie, thanks for that insight. And we're going to get very specific. What is one thing that really has you fired up in your field of cybersecurity, client account management, sales, whatever? What has you really fired up? The great thing about technology and this industry is that it's always evolving. So you're always learning. I'm essentially right now fired up about behavioral analytics incorporated into security solutions to identify breaches. Essentially, it allows us to understand when something is out of the norm and proactively fix it. Some of these algorithms will identify a lot faster than human resources looking through logs to understand if something's fishy, pun intended. So I think behavioral analytics will, for example, why is Val sending two terabytes of data every night to Russia? You'll have an automatic prompt that'll, that'll let you know their admins know, hey, something is out of the norm here. Why don't you take a look at it? Um, and it's really the only good way to understand what's going on and have visibility into your network uh, and, and proactively fight against any kind of vulnerabilities and mitigate those. So what you're saying is in that analytics is there's software running, computer programs running, just monitoring the, the activities of people on the networks to say, is this correct? Is this right? This seems a little bit odd. Maybe we should go investigate. Is that correct? Correct. For example, you don't have your Word documents opening at PowerShell. Um, or any of those kind of things. And it, it'll alert companies to any kind of out of the norm behavior. All right, Valerie. And we're going to move over to an aha moment. Could you take us to a moment in time of an incredible aha moment you have that you turned into success? Navigating college is tough, right? You have so many opportunities presented. You're inundated with so many different topics in your degree because you're just trying to get a foundation of engineering or STEM. And again, you're answering that question, what do I want to be grow up? I bounced around across the board. I started, you know, the Power Electronics Society, controls. I wanted to do biomedical engineering at one point. And during that time, a professor had offered me an opportunity to go to a week-long IEEE Power and Energy Society conference. At that conference, I truly realized the importance uh, of securing those connections and transmissions. You know, we're living in a globally connected world and securely transmitting data is very important. So one of the sessions I attended was, you know, securing the power grid and, and the repercussions and implications of, you know, if we don't and the right way to do it. And so that aha moment, I was sitting in that conference and I said, computer networks and cybersecurity, this is, this is where I need to be working, what I'm passionate about. So STEM Nation, listen to what Valerie was saying there. You know, she went to a, a power electronics seminar where, the, where she actually, I think, probably were, you were able to go for free because it was sponsored by a professor. Is that correct? Correct. It was a week-long trip uh, where you had people from Australia and Brazil and, and Canada and the United States all coming together kind of talk about power electronics. STEM Nation, if Valerie is like, well, you know, power electronics, maybe that's not something I want to do. And she would have foregone that and not gone and taken advantage of that opportunity. She never would have put two and two together with cybersecurity and securing communication. Um, and also, one thing we also talk about on the podcast is your network. You know, so Valerie's meeting people from all over the world, expanding her network. You never know when that network is going to come in handy, um, connections you're going to make. So, Take advantage of all these opportunities that come your way and keep it, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and just keep an open mind. And, and thank you for that, Valerie. That's a very good aha moment. And now, Valerie, getting through college, you kind of touched on this. It's challenging. You're navigating through. There's so many different things you can do. But what is what are some things that you wish you knew when you're heading into college that you think it would help STEMers launch into college successfully? Don't give up. We're all going to fail at different points in our life. And STEM curriculums do have a higher level of rigor than a lot of others. 
Um, but if it were easy, everyone would do it. So differentiate yourself, keep going, um, and be agile and adaptable. Things never always work out exactly how you plan in your head. You're going through, you're applying for these colleges, you have your applications in, and I'm sure you have, you know, all of these different plans that are going on and how things should fall into order, but that's not, that's not life. Um, so you need to be patient with yourself. Engineering is tough. It's not something you can learn overnight. There are concepts I had to sit with for days, and finally I would have that aha moment. The ball would go on. Um, and then lastly, as you're, you're looking and transitioning to college, surround yourselves around people that are working towards common goals as you. You learn exponentially faster, and you can do that through joining extracurricular activities in college. Um, I personally joined IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and cannot stress the importance of being around like-minded individuals. All right, Valerie, and you just recently graduated, I'd say probably six to eight months or so ago, and you've transitioned now from college into a career. What are some skills or attributes or some insights into transitioning successfully into a career? You know, you're in school and you're in college and you're studying for that really hard exam. You take it, you nail it, you got an A. That feels like success. You know that you're progressing, you're working towards something. Something for me personally that was difficult when I moved into a career role, and, and I am only, you know, six, eight months out of school, so has been understanding what is progress, what is success, where am I supposed to be right now? I don't have a test where I have an A and I know that I did the right thing. So you just have to trust your gut, you have to work really hard and just know that you'll eventually get to that end point that you're looking for. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you're navigating in a new company, understanding the politics, the culture, uh, how everything operates and plays together. But really it's just keep working really hard, keep pivoting and being able to be agile in that company and, and um, keep learning. All right. Thanks for that, Valerie. And we're going to take a quick pause and thank our sponsor, Audible, who's offering a free audiobook. You can head over to stemonfirebook.com. That's stemonfirebook.com to get a free audiobook of your choosing. If you decide to cancel within 30 days, there's no cost and you keep the audiobook. And Valerie, it is lightning round time. Are you ready? Let's do it, Jeff. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Dreams don't work unless you do. And a personal habit that contributes to your success. Go after it. You have to start somewhere. Take every opportunity that's presented to you. Even if you have no idea what you're doing, just start. Experts aren't born overnight. And a favorite internet resource or phone app and why? Outlook. <laughs> I plan my entire life in that calendar. If you want to accomplish everything you set your mind to, you need to plan. I can't stress that enough. And one book you would recommend? A phenomenal professor in college told me, Practical Electronics for Inventors. There's so much information out there for engineering that it can be overwhelming. Um, an engineer is essentially an inventor. And this book helps fuels your creativity to get electronics from basic concepts to the complex. Um, so practical electronics for inventors is definitely my go-to. We're going to wrap up here. Could you share a parting piece of guidance for STEM Nation? And we will say goodbye. As you're trying to navigate juniors and seniors, just look at all your opportunities. Make sure that you choose something and if you don't like it, that you change. Uh, it, there's nothing wrong with trying to pivot your career paths, but just make sure you take those opportunities. All right. Thanks for that, Val. And we will say goodbye. All right. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed our chat today with Valerie. Head over to stemonfire.com, subscribe to the email list to keep up with the latest happenings, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player. And please share it with a friend. Tune in next week we talk with Chris, who is the Dean of Engineering at Marquette University. Until next time, I hope this chat has helped ignite your passion towards a 